Big three probably the uh, talking about the most significant uh, concept here is talking about what is the p value here. Basically, they want to use permutation to calculate the p value and to see whether interacting proteins tend to have a similar evolutionary rate. So, so interacting protein have similar physics, but cannot be explained by similar things in real life. That's the <coughs> so first figure A is say uh, they calculate the mean difference in the evolutionary rate between each proteins in randomly uh, chosen random random network. So this is this one is generated based on the random network. And the delta K bar, that's our observation. I don't think that's K. Oh, you said that this, this figure is to determine if proteins are simple or similar, similar what? Sorry. Well, the protein, an uh, interacting protein tend to have similar evolutionary rates. And why would they not? What? I guess they're fine. Why they wouldn't have? Why do we expect them to have a similar rate? Like, shouldn't we expect them to have similar rates? I mean, why? If they're, they're interacting with each other, I don't know. They, will, they, they, they should evolve similarly? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's actually an interesting argument. There's actually <laughs> a. I did my postdoc entirely on that subject. <laughs> uh, later on, I'll probably also go back to present that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of people make a make a, a huge argument. Why protein? How protein interact or in a complex? How how they should evolve? <coughs> but here's the observation. How do they? How 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 do they know? How do they evaluate why protein interact with each other tend to evolve by the similar pace? So they basically calculate what something they call delta k. Delta k is the absolute differences between the evolutionary rate of protein one and the protein two. And basically, is this delta k is basically this. So basically the difference between any pair of protein the rate, they calculate that okay, they don't, and then they take an average, there will be an observation. But they so based on the current interaction that's what they observation, right? That's our observed delta K here. But how do they calculate the p-value? We have just one each protein interaction for How do we give a p-value to this? So, so we first generate a random network. Ooh, sorry. So we basically permutated all those nodes uh, in the each protein interaction network, and then calculate with all those delta k's. the protein interaction network, we have just one real one, right? so all those protein will interact. Right. I'm just showing some random network. 
how do we make a random network out of this one? Uh, yes, that's our, this is, let's say this is the yeast protein network. I want to convert into a random network. Uh, how, how can we do this? A random network. Well, if you think about it, your Facebook, well, your, your social network probably is not random, right? How do you assume, generate a random social network? If we want to evaluate your social network, is this the Spelman student? Do they interact randomly? I mean, we can we can draw we basically pick those are every student and how they interact with each other, and we can just put a, a link there. And how do we evaluate? Say, is our student interact randomly or not? How do we evaluate that? How do we generate a random network to evaluate the real spelling protein, a student interaction network? The key word is permutation. Uh, right. 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 We have to randomly ra generate a random network by randomly assign how students interact. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can basically uh, still put all those genes there, uh, or in, in our case, all the students, you can still put a student there. And then you just randomly uh, assign how they interact without looking at. We, we know there are so many interactions in the real one, and we basically, without looking at the the random way, we basically like this, literally, uh, just th throw throw a link into the network and see which two they can hit. I'll draw a link there, and then. Try to move all the edges into the random one and see how they link. That's okay. Basically, uh, randomly assign, randomly assign links, and the, those links are interactions. This is basically how we do this uh, conceptually. Now, uh, in R, we can do this using a. Uh, <coughs> we can use a pairwise list to do this. So, uh, our input data is a pair. So, we have gene 1, gene 2, gene 1, gene 3, gene 1, gene 5, and gene 2. We have a List of, uh, we have basically a pair of uh, uh, as an interaction net initially. And how do we reshuffle everything? And uh, I want to use a sample command. I want to use a sample command again. So the sample command is what does reshuffle for us? What? The sample command is what does reshuffle for us? Yes. Yeah. Sample command. Uh, by default, is the uh, resample uh, without bootstrap. I think so. So this, uh, so basically, the bootstrap should be false. The permutation should be false. And pairs. So we should we can use, but the pairs is the, the problem of the pair is again is two vectors, right? But the sample only work on one list. Of vector, so again we have to uh, we have to put convert our pairs into a long list of IDs. So 
so so we we'll have to put a long wave power here again using using the C pair of OIF one or F two. So we have to put that into a long list RD and then sample it. But after we sample it again, it, it again it's a long list of ID. How do we convert it back into pairs? That's really the key for <coughs> that usually is a, 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 a learning curve that most students will have. So basically, I want to generate random pairs. I want to generate random pairs. Let's uh, make random pairs. So I have an input each protein interaction interaction pairs. I have the original list. I want to generate a random pairs. That will be the random network. I want to use a sample R function to do this. And after after I run the sample R function, everything will still be a long list of things. Right? It will be something like a gene, say 10, gene 1, gene 13, gene 2, gene 4. It's a long list of things. How do I convert this back into a random pair? You con convert it back into the vector. What I did, I just cut it by half. And the first half I call it y f one, and second part I call it y f two. Oops, y f two. That's the conceptually. That's what we are. How 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 this permutation is done by my R squared. So we we have these interaction pairs. That's our interaction pairs. That's our observation. I want to create a random pairs using the sample command. I uh, convert this into a long list of ID. Use a sample command to reshuffle everything. That will be a long list of things, and then cut it by half. The first part is OIF1, the second part is OIF2, and then I will have a random pair of right? And those will be the OIF1. This will be OIF2. So this one will be G10 here. That's 10. This is 1. This is 13. That's 2. That's 4. And let's assume. Here is started with G7, G, uh, G7, G8, uh, 9. So this then this one will be 7, 8, 9, 2, 9. Do I make, am I making sense to you? Kind of. <laughs> okay, let me try again. <laughs> uh, Sorry, what? If I tell you what I think so far. Yes, that's a good point. How about you come here on the board and draw what you think okay. I'm doing? And then we discuss whether that is really. <laughs> see whether you can read my mind. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Click the board and. to be dry before you can dry later. Basically, how do we do the permutation? Yeah.
special network of hosts that we have. Mm -hmm. Two long, two vectors of 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 right. Generate random network, basically it's a random pairs. Uh, let's say that's our original pairs. Original pairs, everything will be. Uh, everything is interacting with each other. Uh, how do I generate the random pairs? I want to use a sample uh, function. The sample function in R it only take one list, one vector of actually let me let me use the actual name one vector. This is two vector a uh, pairs by that by definition means there's two columns, uh, two vectors or columns, and this one is just one column. I want to use this function, but this will only take one column. Oh, okay. Our input is two columns. Oh, okay. And I also want to output to a two random pair, it's also two columns. Okay. Right. That's my dilemma here. But I know sample can generate the random, can do the randomization for me. I, I don't even know how sample does, but that's all we need. We know sample with other random foundation forms. Okay. We want to use it. Okay. So, okay, so what, what I figured out with the way I'm approaching this, there must be other ways. So, I convert the pair, the two column, into one column. I, and then I fit it into sample. I'm basically using a, using a C ORF1 ORF2 that will change us to one column and then I fit into the sample command fit into there but this one still gave me one column okay? a long list of uh, IDs a, a, a long list of names, names. 
Uh, let's say this is gene 9, gene 7, gene 8, 10, 11. And up, half, about halfway through, that would be gene 21, gene 2, gene 1, gene 9, gene 11. So I want to convert this one back into two columns. Because I want the random pairs, not just one long list of uh, names. Yes. So how do I do that? I uh, cut this one by half. The first one I call it arrive one. That could be nine, seven, eight, ten, eleven. And the second one I cut it. By another half, put it into another column. So I have two. That would be 21, 2, 1, 9, 11. Oh, actually, let's calculate that. Oh, we should avoid self pairing. I'm going to call it 13. So, so now I have two columns. And since everything here is re reordered, this will be a random pairs. The random pairs is basically a random network. That's one. So and basically here we can calculate the delta k from, from the original one. That's our observation. That is our observation. It's, we calculate this. This is here. And we generate a random pair, we calculate another delta k. Where does this one go? Let's call this random network 1. Where, where will this point go? Say again. Do we need that value that Yes, that's the purpose of calculating that this, the null distribution. So, in fact, this, after we calculate this, that okay for this, this will belong to any point in this bell shape. It could be anywhere in this bell shape. How we get this bell shape? Because after we did, we did 10,000 times. We did the 10,000 random pair, calculate the 10,000 of our random data here. That's how we get this shape. It could be anywhere there. That's how we get this shape. Because we, we permeate it 10,000 times, that's how we get that. Right. Is it clear now? <laughs> A little bit? So, so basically, this is what the is H null distribution. And, so, and we need to generate a whole population to actually see the null distribution. And, we, and for every simulation we've done, that's just one, uh, one data point in this. That's why we had to do so many times. So this is what, why it's important to learn how to do computing efficiently. Okay, maybe maybe uh, how about how about we ask someone else to come back and erase this and explain this again? Try to try to basically you, you, you write down what you think I'm doing here. Uh, okay, someone else. Uh, oh, two people. Um, we, we can have two people. Uh, even the entire class. I don't mind. How about we have the entire class come here right here? Oh, Ella, you are pointing to yourself. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> nope. Okay, how, how about you three all can? <laughs> Uh, okay, let me let me wipe this out and uh, no. 
Let's rewrite everything. What? Just looking to make sure I can see what you want. Okay, yes. I got the stuff in the purple. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, so I'm just going to do this. Yeah, I'll do this. Okay, I'll, I'll, how about you? Yeah. Trust me. You, you are really listening very I'm careful. Sure. Yeah. What? I'm just taking it in. Yeah, but how about you tell me what you have understood? Because otherwise, uh, I don't know which I'm part you are working. What? You put. what? That was a lot. What you did. Okay. <laughs> okay, I get the networking, and then you have at least a brand new networking. Right. Yeah. If you want to separate into two vectors. Well, it was yeah. into it. The input is into vectors. Yeah, ORF1, ORF2. Right, right. Originally, it is in two columns. Okay, I got that. Right. But I want to use a sample function, but that sample function only takes one column of it. Okay. So I merge the two into one column and put into sample. But sample also output to one column. And I need a two column for the random pair. That's the word of the random network. The random pairs of it the interaction is the random network. How do we get back to two? Yeah, and then I put it back to two columns. That's my random pair. That's random network. So you only get a random pair after you separate it, put it back together, and separate it. You have to explain what it means, separate and separate again. So, like, well, just Corolla and the purple is that you have a network, a random network, right. and then yes, you separate it into two vectors, your RF1 and your RF2. Well, you said that you put the two vectors back together and or you compare them in one column. But then the question was, how do we separate back into two columns? So you've gone from one separated into two vectors, then put it in one column, and then you've gone into two columns, <coughs> or put it in two columns? Okay, I'm, I'm also confused. Uh, <laughs> you, you have to, you have to uh, come here and point to me the step. Uh, uh, I guess this arrow is, sorry. I'm not so, okay, so let's just back up. So yeah. the question is, you're going from two vectors, uh -huh. so put it in one column, mm -hmm. and then you separate it into two columns, and then you separate it into two columns. Right. Okay, great. Yeah. That's what I was asking. So, so I have... Two column here, I put it into one, fit into sample, sample output still to one, and then goes back to two columns. So when you put it into the one column, they're pretty much being jumbled up so that you can get your random pair when you separate it back into two columns. Perfect. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, there is actually one thing I have mentioned. How does the length of the column change? With the amount. That you have in there. Right, yeah. The more that you have in there, the, the longer your column is. Up. Right, Let, let's say my column here is length of n. There are two, basically, let's say I, I'm inputting two columns here. And, uh, and it, it starts from 1, 2, 3, all the way to n. Right, that's my input. From first one to the last one, there are, there are n number of uh, rows in this pair. So the length so basically I'm having two times n number of names. Right. Since I have n uh, total number of n and n number of rows, I have a pair. So I have how many names I have is two times n. So uh, if I put in these two columns into one column, the, the, nap, the length of this one is also 2n. So this is 2n feeding to sample, come out, it's also uh, 2n. So it's from 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to n, n plus 1, then to 2n. That's actually very important because I want to know where, how do I separate this long list into the two columns? I need to find out where, where is the middle one? Which, which, is, where is my center? Where do I cut this column? Okay. Right. Since the, because the input number is number of n rows, after I permit it, this will be 2n. It will be 2n number of names. 
And the middle, where is the middle? The middle is between the number of n and n plus 1. That's my middle. That's where I cut. <laughs> That's where I cut this row. Is this uh, the n plus 1 divided by 2? Or just n plus 1? No, uh, between n and n plus 1. That's my middle row. Okay. The total length is 2n. Where is the middle of my column? Okay, if you think about this, uh, if I have, a, a, say, a 10 genes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, where is the center of this long list? It's here, between 5 and 6. And this, think about this is my 2n, and my n will be 5. This is my n. This is my n plus 1. So this is where I cut. Is it making sense? Right? And if you go back here, well, it's basically the same thing. It's I have a 2n, where is my, where should I cut? I cut between n and n plus 1. That's how I cut this long, long vector into a two shorter vector. So, so the first one will have n number, 1, 2n, it will be n number of genes. The last one from n plus 1 to, to 2n, you can count, it's also a n number of names. So that's why I can put them back as a pair, as, a, as pairs. Both of them have the same number of uh, names. Are we okay. So, so conceptually, that's what uh, I'm trying to do. Now let's see how I can do this in armor. You have to pay attention to this because this will be part of your project, part of your homework, part of your exam. And this is also a uh, it's also something need you to pay really attention to detail here. Okay, let's look at my R squared. Uh, I first define a function to calculate the, the delta k between pairs of genes. Because I well, I have to calculate this like 10,000 times. I don't want to write it every time. Right? Yes. So I call, I define a function to calculate the delta k first. So my function basically says uh, that I input a pair into my function. Uh, let me see. Uh, and then I want to find out what is the k for every pair? Uh, I assign, so it's actually again using the matching function. So my, my e pairs will be, say, gene 1, gene 2, gene 3, gene 4, gene 1, gene 5. Right? But I want to find out the k1. Ka for gene one and Ka for gene two, so 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 this will be ORF one. This will be ORF two. I don't want to calculate. The, uh, I want to calculate the difference between Ka's. So I need to find out. I need to have two columns. Say Ka one for this column, Ka two for the second column. That's why I call it K1 and K2. How do I find that? I basically, again, use the batch function 
this should be k data. Look, go back to my evolutionary data based on OIF. I found out all those k values. So first you the matching function found out all the k values. And then this is the minus sign. I basically calculate the minus sign. This ABS. What does the ABS stand for? Yeah, it's also anti-Greek system something. <laughs> anti log Greek system. Okay, I forgot. All that. Anyhow, but that's I guess there's a if there's a funny word you can remember. <laughs> this is basically calculate the absolute value between K1 and K2 and for AVG. And there's also tiny there's a a, a, a smaller a technical part of it, but it's kind of important. I call it NA, this is called NA dot remove equal true. This is because not every gene have an evolutionary distance, some of the gene are missing in that notation. Uh, so somet sometimes those evolutionary distance are, are not available. If there's a missing, basically that's uh, something is missing. If we don't remove those from an uh, analysis, and we calculate the mean value of this, that mean value will also become not available. Since because if any one of the members is not available, you calculate the average of that, that's going to be not available too. So we want to remove those, so RN for remove. So basically say I'm not going to consider any member that is missing. And then I can actually get the real value in my name. So that's how I and then you can of mean, basically calculate the mean of those absolute delta k's. That's my delta k function. Um, and after I get, write this function, I just call it, this is my, my original pairs. And as of calculate, I, I call this delta differ K OBS for observation. So this is basically my delta K observation as the paper has said. That's delta K observation. That's how we calculate this. And after then here comes the fun part. We need to do permutation ten thousand times. Well, for the example, I need to do it a hundred times. So it won't take that long. And I want to save all those simulate delta k because I want to generate a null distribution, right? Generate a histogram. So I will also use a, a basically this is just my uh, storage plate to save all my calculations. Here's the part. This is the uh, I merge two columns to, into a single column for the sample function. And uh, this is basically my n here. Then it's my n here. Oh, I should change. I need to go back change my data to k data. K data. This is my long list of IDs. I, I call it IDs O R I G for original. So this way uh, I can remember and and I also recorded the, the length of my long list of IDs. So I call it L E N. Uh, so that way I can go back to find out the center for this long list. So now I'm going to do simulations. How many shall I call N sims? Yeah. So So for every sim I use the for loop to do the simulation. For every simulation I first use the sample command to generate uh, 
new IDs is, uh, is a single column vector. So I need to reformat the single column remote remote uh, reformat to two column. And the pairs. Uh, that's how uh, I need to generate random pair. That's how my what my random network is. This is how I do this. And so from the first one to the entire length divided by two. That's my ORF one. And the length divided by two plus one. That's the beginning of my the the ORF two and all the way to the last one. This is the second half. First half. This is the, so from one to the length divided by two, that's the first half. And length divided by two plus one, that's that's the start of my second half. And then I put this one back into two columns. Convert them back. Convert them back to spreadsheet. That's because my uh, uh, per my function to calculate the uh, delta k will take in the spreadsheet. So then, and um, I do that for 100 times for this. Let's see whether it's working or not. Oops, uh, permuted different delta k is not found. I must have a typo somewhere. Uh, let's see. Differ about k. Oh, numerical. Okay, let's run this again. It take a while. Okay, come out. And basically, those are my data k calculated. So I'm using head command to see just a f first a few of them. Um, and what is this? If I do a histogram of the generated data k, what is this graph called? I want to hear the magic words. Permutation. OK. <laughs> Another one, a different one, a more more uh, statistically oriented concept. What? Uh, what's the name of this figure? The histogram of permutator delta k. That's true. It's not. Hard. If we do ten thousand, probably it will look like <laughs> more like a bell shape. Yeah. But what's the, what is this? That's a histogram. <laughs> yes, it's a histogram of, ran, uh, of the delta k calculated based on random distribution. And this will be... Yes, but how do we calculate the p-value? We need this graph to calculate the p-value, and this figure is called... Yes, this is our null distribution. Yeah, this is our null distribution. Yeah, this is h null. 
have patterns. This is basically our now have patterns. Yeah. Yes. It's coming up. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So. And how do we find out uh, uh, our, our how how do we calculate the p value? And we need to uh, well. Just find out how many of those uh, uh, simulation are more extreme of our observation. Right? So let's see our, our what's our observation here. Our observation is something I call delta k difference k observation. Our observation is 0.02a here. And I just want to find out how many of my simulated sample are more extreme than that. And so, so basically I say how many of my uh, simulated delta K are less than my uh, observed delta K. And then that's my simulated p-value. And in my case, I got a p-value of zero. What do you think is the problem here? It's so small that it's trying to see yeah. uh, Yes, except here, I did 100 simulation. I didn't see anything less than my observation. What this means, my p-value is less than one out of top of 100. Okay. Right? Because I only did 100 simulation, and if if the p-value is, say, a, a point, point 0.9 percent, I won't be able to see it because my smaller p-value I can see is one percent. Right. So it basically says it's less than one out of the number of simulation we have done. Now that's what. I, so, so if I want to improve the precision, the precision of my p-value, I need to do what? Do more of simulation. I just see. Instead of simulate 100 times, and in the science paper they simulate like 10,000 times. That's why they, they want to see more precise p-value. That's the reason. Okay, and there will be. Uh, I also uh, I also actually generate a figure similar to Figure One. Yeah, that's basically a. This is. So for the 100 number I have simulated, that's the distribution. But our observation actually is outside of this histogram. That's why it's there. If I want to see a precise p-value, I need to simulate large enough so at least this tail will go over here, go over to the my right here. So that's why. Why sometimes you, you hear people say we need. A more computing power. That's why the, that's the well the reason. Because if you want to get more significant result, you need to generate more detailed distribution. So. Okay, I'm going to leave here. Let you digest. <laughs> uh,